Hey everyone and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build video and today I am making the 60s British flat. So remember before, if you guys would be, if you're a returning viewer, you will know that I've always talked about my struggles with creating flats and it's not a lie, I do struggle a lot creating them. It took me two months to create the original British flat, which I love, I love. That is... When I say that flat is like closer to the flat that I used to live in, for anyone new here, I used to live in a flat growing up. So that's why it took me such a long time to create one. Because I was like, I've spent a majority of my life here. I should know what I'm talking about. And I struggled a lot because I was just trying to find a way to truly describe what I knew. Um, so then that, that just like took ages off of my life trying to do. But then this time around, I was originally supposed to do a hotel. But then I was like, you know what? I feel this need to create another flat. But this time, I'm going to mix two ideas that I've had before. So I've done a mid-century semi-detached within The Sims before. And I was like, okay, let me mix that idea. And let me mix the flat idea. And let me create this flat. Also, speaking of, when I was originally doing that other flat, it took me ages. And I mean absolutely ages to go into Google and try and find out what a flat looked like because yeah i could have gone on google images but i didn't want to do the direct one that i used to live in i wanted to do like a, something that could be a bit like universal so it took me ages to go on youtube last time to try and not youtube google and even i didn't find many on pinterest to find out what do like typical british flats look like they're either giving me the hyper modern ones with the really primely colors like the blues and the whites and the reds and everything like that not me just noticing that they're all on the British flag, but anyway, on the Union Jack. But I was like, okay, so what kind of one? That's not what I want. So when I was searching on Google, I kept seeing flats like this. So I was like, oh, but this is not the one that I lived in. I lived in the other one, the really tall one. These ones are normally like around about three to four maximum floors high. But the other one I lived in was like up to 20 floors high. So it's like I wanted to do the really tall looking or brutalist looking kind of flats. But I kept finding these ones, the ones that I'm creating. So I decided, you know what? I feel the need to create a British build because it feels like it's been absolutely ages. Like it's probably hasn't been that long. But I thought I should do As you can see now as well, I I left that in. I would have quit it, but I realized the video was way shorter anyway. So like, I'm used to doing my 24 minutes. What is these 18 minutes that have been happening recently? But anyway, I did delete all of that previous extension I did because I originally wanted to do this at four two bedrooms so you could have like your kids and what i've realized is that the way i've done it you can adjust the kitchen and remove the dining area and kind of make that into a small very small living area and then make that living area into a bedroom if you wanted to but i've kept it as one bedroom one bath but you can totally convert it into a two bed if you like but anyway i digress um with I went with Google. I was just, I kept seeing these type of flats and I was like, but that's not the type I wanted to create. But then when I was struck with the urge to make a British build, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me actually make that kind of style that I've been wanting to do. And then when I went on Google, I couldn't find the style and I was like, what? I think that's one of the most difficult things that there's not many difficult things being a, being a Sims 4 builder because you literally this video game and it's fun but one of the difficult things if many is like fighting the engine i'll say one of the difficult things is fighting the sims 4 engine i do believe and i've said this before that the sims 4 is the best building engine we've ever had within the game history through from one through whatever but sometimes even still certain things don't work like i was watching a jessica pie video and she even talked about this one issue that I faced before when I was actually making, because as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but this is the same area where I've got the British street and the terraced house. So like that's, this is like that area within my British save file. And, um, as she was talking about, I, I experienced a similar issue in the, in the British street one, I was, I was finding it really difficult to get my Sims to move through the corridor. And I was wondering why can't my Sims move through the corridor only to find out that it was because of one of the wall hanging things. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense like at all. And it was just really, really annoying. But that's what I mean when I say I'm fighting the engine. It's not that I can't build with it. You can do crazy things like 
Guys, when that disadvantage comes out, you're going to see, oh, wow, you can do crazy things. Obviously, I'm not just saying it just because my build, but like there's been so many other builds. Like I can't name them on the top of my head, but there's been candy stores that I haven't made, but I'm talking about other builders I've made. There's been candy stores. There's this one build that I really like. She does these really aesthetic um, looking restaurants and stuff like that. And then there's also been like crazy, amazing mansions. There's been grottos. There's been Christmas markets. There's been a lot of gray bills. So it's not saying that it, I think it's just, you just have to like try and work with it and work around it. But there's certain things that you can't work around. For example, wall fixtures, not allowing your Sims to walk past them. Like the thing we got with the clutter thingy. It just does not work for whatever reason allow you to make any movement on a tile space when it, that's on the wall, which is completely inconvenient because trust me when I say it, I've got a lot of things that inconvenience, inconvenience me within the Sims when it comes to building. Like, why have I now sized down this plant and you still can't go you still can't go through the plant. But anyway, just to describe what I'm doing before like, I go too deep into my rack, I'm creating the yellow lines because I don't know how it works in other countries. You can tell that I don't do that much architectural research. But, ooh, that was my stomach rumbling because it's almost time for me to eat. <laughs> but no, anyways, um, there is like normally white. There's one yellow line, double yellow lines, and all of that kind of stuff. Double yellow lines. You should never park there, ever. Unless you want a ticket. It makes me sound like I'm salty. Like, I haven't. Um, I've parked there before and I've got a ticket. I haven't because I don't have a driver's license. It's not from lack of trying. I think I said this before. I failed like six driving tests. And I'll still keep going. But it's just not the funnest thing to do when you queue here. So, okay. I, I don't wanna go, I'm not going to go too much into a rant about it. But failing an entire test in the, in the, in the back in the parking center. I was back in the driving center, right? I did the entire test, zero minus, they just gave me one major at the very end of my test when parking up, did my 360 check, but they wanted me to do it again because the lorry went past. But then I was like, did I start driving when the lorry was there? No. D was Did I make the lorry stop at all? No. Did I inconvenience the lorry? No, I didn't. But because I didn't do it again as a lorry went past, even though I did see the lorry move in, and I knew, okay, the lorry's gone. They failed me right there and then. And I was like, I will never forget because this was my first driving test. And since I failed because of that, it kind of ruined my other driving test from then on because it was like, it just kind of dropped my confidence because it's like, how can you fail me over something like that when I know damn well you passed someone who hit a curb and who didn't indicate when a roundabout, if you don't know what a roundabout it is, basically instead of, we do have crossroads, but we mainly use roundabouts and it basically is, you always have to give way to the people on your right and you just go around the bout thing and you always have to indicate left when you're turning off. And someone was going straight and they didn't, after you pass the previous exit, you must indicate to turn off. So someone went past the first exit, was approaching the second exit, which was a straight ahead on this roundabout. And they didn't indicate left as if they were coming off the roundabout. Now, you see, that I, that is a minor in my head. But even still, that person got to pass, but I had zero minors. And they gave me that one major and they were just like, and didn't you know what he had the cheek to say to me? Oh, I bet you're going to pass the second one. And I was like, N now, if you knew that I was that good of a driver, you should have just passed me there and then. And it was the fact that he even said, oh, you're such a good driver. I even forgot to give you directions because he did. After you do, when you do the first portion of your driving test, you're supposed to have a sat nav and the sat nav or slash nav navigator allows you to know where you're going or you follow the road signs. I had a sad enough, follow this was sad enough. And then as the sad enough finishes, you continue going straight ahead unless you're told not to do so. I continued going straight ahead, was listening to music, overtook a bus, doing well, did amazing. And he failed me. He still failed me. That's not even the worst way I've ever failed. The worst way I've ever failed was like, that one was one. That was the huge one. The second one, I almost hit a cub, but I didn't hit a cub, failed it. Um... There were previous road markings on the road saying you should not take a right right turn, but I was being told to take a right turn. And I was looking at this guy and I was like, I know you're not trying to make me go into traffic because that's making me seem like you want me to go into traffic. And he was like, no, 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 go for a right turn. I'm looking at him like you're crazy, but I want to say no. But then if I say no, he's probably going to fail me. But I'm thinking in my head, I want to say no. 
But he was just like, no, just do the right turn. So I started doing the right turn, started going into oncoming traffic, and it was like, no, over there. And I was like, okay, thank you so much for that. And then there was this one is who it was my I think it was my last drive in my last drive in test because I got it I, with everything that happened with the panini and everything that happened with the university everything just kind of got in the way, but with my last drive in test before everything bear in mind my theory is expired so I have to redo that that's the worst part I rather do a drive in test than my theory, and um, I was what you call it I did on the drive in test do you know what they failed me for that, yes. Uh, you're supposed to do when you're doing parallel parking, you're not supposed to park in anyone's driveway, you're not supposed to park opposite a parked car, and you're supposed to leave one car length from you and one car length behind you, and always stop and do your 360 check anytime there's an oncoming car. Do not try and squeeze through if there's an oncoming car. Stop and let them give you way, or let them try and get past you. That's what you do. That's what I did. And they failed me because they were like, you were one and a quarter car length away. No cars behind me, bear in mind, but I was one and a quarter car length away from the car in front of me. And then I was just there. When he told me in the yard, they, they say, they say, don't argue because then that'll just cause you more issues when it comes to trying to get your driver's license. But I knew from then on in that point, six driving lessons, six driving tests is not a walk in a park. That is expensive. And then to do all those, te- all those lessons in between until you get your next test, is expensive and the entire time i was just thinking to myself i if i was so if i wasn't like i was i was feeling so toxic i was like i'm gonna break i want to break down into tears right now and show this guy that you have ruined my entire life by failing me for such nonsense this because i know other people pass with worse i've known personally people who have passed with worse most people would do about a minimum 10 hours, maximum 40 hours. I'm thinking well over 100 hours. I know how to drive. I am good at driving. I've been driving for the last six years. I can drive. And then he was just, and they just, it was just, it was just the worst, one of the worst experiences. It's just, it annoys, it, that's why it annoys me so much. I was supposed to be talking about this build and I got sidetracked with, yeah, anyways, with his six years flat. <laughs> With this success fat, I was just like, I really want a Korean one. I also kind of want to just finish the entire assembly of my little corner, my little British corner that I have in my British safe file. So I, I, I did it and I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's plain because British architecture is plain when it's like, once it got to the sixties and they took aboard a lot of brutalist kind of vibes and everything like that, everything really did become a little bit plain. That's why the exterior may not look the best, but that's what I did try and go for. Also, the sim is so cute. Like, I've been making really cute sims lately because I don't like making sims. Like, I like building houses and I like playing the games and I like, like, making the faces and the hairs and everything. But as soon as you tell me, okay, making your outfit, no, I don't want to. I really don't want to. I promised myself within this video that I was going to talk more about the actual video itself, but it looks like it's about to end and I haven't. So you know what? Another challenge failed today, but you know what? I'm feeling like I'm going to make a hotel. But also, if you guys have any suggestions on what type of restaurant I should make, because I really want to make a restaurant, please comment down below any type of restaurant that you think I should create or should make or should look up. And yeah. And thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But if you don't want to, that's also okay. I appreciate you staying this long and listening to all of my rambles. Also, don't forget to leave a little comment down below. I read all of your comments and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.